Hello, this is Clara, but you can call me Mother, and welcome to the Studio Yutani Alien Day live stream. Now, today with me, I've got Devin Gill, a creative of Alethros. Hey, Devin, how are you today? Hi, you're okay. How about you? Good. So I've I've got you on a video stream now, so just be warned. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. You are visible. So excellent. Um, well. You know, today is Alien Day in America. It's uh, Alien Day is already over uh, for us in Australia, but I, I get to celebrate it for longer, which is really cool. Yeah. I was wondering, um, what drove you to uh, create Alethro? So, so for those people who who don't know, I'll get Devin to explain um, his project and what he does. Yep. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Um, okay, so basically, you know, I, I was a huge fan of, uh, of the prequels, uh, you know, going back to Prometheus and I was really excited when uh, covenant finally got off the ground because for the longest time, it, even the possibility of a second movie was up in the air. I think it took about five years for covenant to come along and, uh, you know, I, I, I was watching the movie and I loved Covenant. And, e you know, even at that time when I was in the theater, I, it didn't even cross my mind to like even do a fan fiction or, you know, do anything remotely, uh, you know, of my own creativity because, you know, it seemed like it was on pretty good footing. I was actually pretty shocked when uh, Covenant didn't, uh, do as well as the studio expected. And so as time went by, I, you know, I, I had this, this drive to want to finish the story. And, you know, I was coming up against a lot of naysayers who were like, oh, yeah, it's for the best. They just, Ridley Scott needs to retire. He's an old man. Uh, these movies suck. They don't deserve to finish. You know, they got to start over. Yada yada yada. Or, or we want Blomkamp's uh, Alien instead. So I, I felt kind of powerless as a fan of of Covenant and the prequels in general. I felt like they deserved an ending, like a big one that you know ties everything together. I saw Covenant as a middle chapter in a greater story, and. So one day, I, I think news had broken that they were already taking sets down. They were selling off uh, some of the studio assets, which didn't, at the time, it just wasn't a good sign. That meant there was no intention to pick things back up. Because the way Ridley Scott made it sound was that, you know, the... Uh, they knew where they wanted to go from then on there. I think he even said that the script for the third one was already being written as they were filming Covenant. Mm. So for all of that to fall apart, I, I was concerned and I said, you know, it, it needs a good ending. And then, so I, I thought to myself, well, if no one else will do it, then, I mean, I'll step up and, uh, I'll do something of my own. And of course it wasn't until later that I discovered, uh, you know, stuff that I, is it project Acheron who does mm -hmm. the alien awakening series? Yeah. yeah. So I saw those and, uh, I was really impressed by them. And, but at the same time I was like, well, you know, I mean, I kind of want to see what, um, you know, what I could do with the material and as an artist, uh, producing work on a regular basis. I, over the years, I built up my own style. So I was like, okay, on top of that, why don't I kind of conclude the story in my own way, uh, you know, in my own fan fiction, but using my own artistic style. And that's sort of how a Lethros was born or a Lethros was born. And uh, it just, it's evolved over the past year or so that I've been working on it. And every day is, you know, has been a journey. I'm, I'm always, uh, you know, coming up with new ways to add to the story and, and, you know, tell the most effective story.
story that I can possibly tell. That's amazing. And I've, I only like found out um, about LA Thros through um, Aaron Percival from AVP Galaxy uh, sharing your stuff. And I was like, oh my God. And then I saw your, your <laughs> page when you launched it prematurely because you were very excited. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was, I was so excited about it when it's fallen into place. I, I, I just felt really good about it. And, and I'm, I'm very grateful for Alethros because <clears throat> before then I wasn't really active in the community. I, I was the only alien fan that I really knew aside from, you know, my family members, like primarily my, my mom who introduced me to alien. Uh, so, you know, to be able to interact with people like Aaron and, you know, Jamie and Connor and Michael, you know, all these great people, uh, it's just, it's been such an incredible honor for me to, you know, be able to, you know, share my ideas with them and, and over time, you know, uh, call them friends, you know, they, because they're just, they're, they're very swell guys, really. And, and, and you, of course, uh, have been just so, so supportive, so encouraging. Uh, I, I, I really, I, appreciate it so much oh thank you <laughs> and it's just it's yeah. so easy to be a fan of fan of you um of uh michael skiddery asher fan fiction comic um also uh connor murdoch with aliens home it's just there's just so much uh creativity in the in the fandom and um i was more excited about the fan releases than it was about the official stuff <laughs> this year yeah yeah um so uh, how how do you, you create um your your comics like I, you've got this like photorealism and, and the grittiness and stuff like that like i i know you've got the uh, graphics design background could you explain to the uh people watch, watching today um on the live stream uh how exactly do you make a comic like this come together oh well it's a it's a very uh it's a very timely process uh basically you know everything i do it always starts out as a as a very sloppy uh thumbnail sketch uh you know i have several little sketchbooks so i'll actually for every page um i draw these little uh rectangles or uh you know squares on them which represent each page so i know okay, this is what I want to happen on this page. This is what I want to happen on that page. <clears throat> I wanted it very metered out. Uh, I wanted the pacing to be very much like a movie because, you know, comic books are the closest medium imaginable to film. Because you are, you're, you're getting, uh, you're, you're getting to see things like frame by frame or the frames that the artist wants you to see in order to form that sequence. So I, I have to really uh, plan that out beforehand. And then um, I, what I do is I, I pull in a lot of different design elements together. Uh, it's a lot of composite designs. Uh, so like, for instance, sometimes there's a character and I have to build the body in a uh, 3D character modeling program. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so if I want them posed a certain way in a certain environment, I have to do every piece individually to make Whoa. them fit together. <laughs> yeah. And, and then, you know, one thing that I wanted to do that no other alien comic has, has really done outside of, say, uh, the Mark Verheiden comics, those were the only ones that were really dealing with um, uh, characters that we've already seen. And so, you know, there were likenesses that were being drawn, but I, I, I wanted, I, I casted, I casted Alethros and, you know, I went, went through a lot of different actors and actresses and I tried to approach it the same way I would approach a movie. And I would say, you know, what do I want this character to look like? Because the more effective and the more realistic the character looks, the easier it's going to be for the reader to identify with that character 
and care about what happens to them. Uh, so, you know, I, like I had a, just a vast library of, uh, videos of said actors and actresses, whether it be like interviews or whatnot. And then I would, uh, use them as a basis, uh, freeze frame, grab the, like the frames in question that I liked that, that fit the exact angle, the exact pose that I wanted put that on top of the, you know, the digitally created uh, bodies. And then I would rotoscope it by uh, layering. I would draw over everything and uh, color over everything. Um, similar to, you know, cause I really like the uh, rotoscope movies, uh, scanner darkly and stuff oh, like that. Yeah. Hyper realism. I could detect that sort of um, like thematic feel throughout the comic because I, I love Scanner Darkly as well and, and those um, sorts of like there's been games that have been released in that sort of mm -hmm. style as well so yeah I really enjoy it <laughs> yeah and I I'd never really seen that in an alien comic before so I was like you know this is new it's different I want to try it uh, because I mean that's that's sort of how I refine my style over the years a lot of composite stuff I try to take different elements and make them fit I even take pictures of things myself and then I uh, manipulate it so I can work it into, you know, whatever is happening. If I need a close up of a particular prop or a uh, close up of uh, like a hand or, or something, I try to blend all of these disparate elements together as seamlessly as possible so that you, you, you don't really know that it's, that it's been kit bashed. Uh, so, so yeah, it's, it, it, it took a long time to put together and, uh, I actually, I actually did the first issue twice. Um, you know, I, the, the first time that I did the issue, I started in December. I did about, about 40 pages, did all of those steps. And then in late March, I looked through the pages and I said, I could do it better. So I scrapped it all and started all over again. Uh, outside of a couple of, of pages from the old, uh, you know, from the old version, everything else was, was constructed again. I constructed it again from like a different angle. And I'm like, okay, this will look better. I want, I, I felt like it could look a lot more dynamic. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, uh, basically I, I was, it was the equivalent of shooting a movie and then it's like a week or a month before release date. And they're like, well, we got to reshoot the whole movie or so. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so that, that's, that's pretty much, uh, went down and I, I was just working, furiously just trying to get it done and I, I i made it to the finish line on issue one but i learned so much that by the time i do subsequent issues uh the process will will go a lot smoother because i've i've learned uh, so many different uh techniques and tips and tricks to make the process smoother that's amazing it's i didn't realize that you had done these models in 3d and had made it so you could like make them poseable. Where where do um these these models these actors <laughs> in your comic come from? Uh, well, okay, so uh, okay, uh, the for instance, one of the characters, <clears throat> uh, Sarah Chaplin, uh, I have I I having her being played, uh by this uh actress uh Katja Herbers that's she's in Westworld uh on HBO and mm -hmm. uh, there, she had a certain look that I liked so I was like you know what I'm going to use her as like I, I feel like she's Sarah Chaplin mm -hmm. and um so that was one uh person that I used uh Hamish Linkletter uh he's a very good actor um I, I used him for Gregory Anderson because 
there's a certain uh, look that I wanted that character to have, and he had that look. So I was like, okay, uh, I want to make this as, like, I w at the end of the day, the whole goal was to make it as uh, lifelike and cinematic as possible. Like, I really want people to feel like this is kind of like a movie that just hasn't been put into physical motion, but you're mm. seeing it via panels. Mm. Okay. Uh, because of the enormity of this project, um, obviously you probably didn't think it was going to start off that way. Did, did you envision having split the comic into certain sections um, at the beginning or, or is something that naturally occurred to you once you realized how in depth uh, you had to go with the story? Well, uh, originally I was gonna, I was gonna make two, uh, just two separate stories. It was going to be like a two parter. Uh, I actually called the first part alien awakening and the second part was going to be called, called, uh, alien elegy. And over time, as I was making it, uh, the title of Lethros occurred to me. And so I was like, oh, okay, that, that sounds like an even better title. Uh, cause no one else has really used that, uh, that specific word, uh, for any kind of fictional project. So I was like, okay. And, you know, of course, as I was developing the story, I noticed that the first, second, and third acts, they are distinctly different from each other. So I, I, I pretty much just settled on the idea of splitting it into three distinct uh, part. So, you know, by the end of issue four, uh, you know, the four of which constitute the seeds of hell, uh, uh, you know, things dramatically change and it kind of becomes a whole other story. And then, you know, the, the next four issues, they, they kind of follow a, uh, a consistent pattern that's unique to that second part. And, and of course, the third part, uh, Titanomachy, um, that is, that's its own little ball of wax too. But at, by the end of the story, it's, you know, it is a three part story, but they are unified by uh, uh, the same narrative. Yeah. Um, how like, oh, I don't know how to word this. Um, how did you become aware of the, the themes um, within Covenant? Like, were they apparent to you when you first watched it? Like, or did it only become apparent once you started doing research to be able to make the comic, the fan comic? Uh, well, I mean, cause, uh, you know, with Prometheus, uh, you know, from the very beginning, these prequels have been subverting expectations, uh, much to some people's frustration. But, you know, Prometheus, uh, it kind of led people to believe that it was going to be about one thing. They, they thought, you know, it was the beginning of like a trilogy where Shaw was going to be the, you know, the, the primary figure and, you know, it would be this, completely different story and then of course with uh, covenant it it sort of changes direction it's, it does involve ideas of creation but from the point of view of artificial intelligence and uh you know the aspirations of artificial intelligence uh contrasted with the creation that we've seen from the engineers. So, you know, Covenant really helped put things into perspective for me. And, you know, thinking back on those two movies, I was able to, you know, see some through lines that I felt like I could put into a Lethros and make it pay off in a, in a pretty big way. I do have some pretty crazy stuff planned out that it really does, uh, uh, tie tie things up, not only in Covenant but uh, Prometheus as well. That's really cool. <laughs> um, 
um, uh, I am. Um, what what sort of like when I started reading Elethros, um, obviously it's it's you, you know who Walter is. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's really interesting that you've opted to go with skipping past um, any of the characters we know of apart from him and kind of just throwing him mm -hmm. into uh, this this timeline we haven't experienced yet. W were you in any way struggling to try to reconcile the end of Covenant to the start of your comic? Or, or did you just go, no, I'm going to start it from here? <laughs> <clears throat> well, it was a long road. Very long road. I I I did so many outlines for Alethros. Essentially, I did like I think seven or eight different outlines, and they're almost completely different stories in and of themselves. I think the first couple of outlines that I did, uh, Daniels and Tennessee were alive; they were in it, and yeah, the more I I thought about it where I was like, well, um, I, 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 you know, without giving too much away, the, as the story progresses, I mean, granted, you will see certain characters again, uh, but in very unexpected ways uh, and through unexpected means. Mm. So, yeah, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's very interesting, but as the story evolved, I, I knew I wanted to create my own characters. And one of the big things that led me to kind of ditch Daniels as a, a central character is I thought, okay, if I was David and, you know, I want to do this with the story, would I be stupid enough to wake up the one person who's figured out who I really am. And that's what I knew, uh, you know, Daniel's role in the story couldn't be as prominent as it was in those, those uh, initial outlines. Uh, but you do see her again, but, you know, in, in different ways. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a bit vague, but... Uh, but yeah, yeah, there there are a lot of surprises in store. There are a lot of surprises in store. Were there any sorts of research that you did in in regards to introducing uh, new technologies that we we haven't been experienced in in the Alien universe that you've put into your comic? Uh, yeah, it, you know, in some ways, I did get like in the initial planning stages, I did come up with some like outrageous uh technologies uh the drone the the red uh from the opening um sequence on Oregon i six that yeah it was originally going to be this really high tech advanced uh, uh thing and then you know i i, I do I, I really like the boston dynamics um uh, inventions that have been coming out because they're they're futuristic, but they're also very practical. And I also thought, well, practicality is very important too. And I thought to myself, you know, if there's going to be, if they're going to send unmanned probes or drones to collect data on like uh, the ecology and the wildlife and, and such, uh, that it would be something that could move like an animal. And so I was like, okay, um, do something kind of like with, with the Spot Mini, except it's, you know, uh, it wouldn't surprise me if like a corporation like Wayland yutani would appropriate something like that uh, for, um, you know, like a colonization mission. And uh, for the most part, I wanted to kind of keep things to what we've already seen since the, the Covenant ship, it, it just contains the technology that it's currently equipped with. And so, you know, we, we see the holographic uh, display again, you know, the very table that displayed Shaw's 
um, distress uh, message. That's mm -hmm. what they watch the, that animal on. And so uh, there's just little callbacks to things that we have seen in Covenant technology wise. But, you know, um, everything else, I just wanted to ground it uh, in reality a little bit. Uh, just to kind of keep it fair and, and relatable. That's really awesome. There's, um, is there a date roughly for when you know Eletheris will finish? Like, because you, you're going to do a staggered release. Um, you, yeah. you've kind of, is it an estimate? <laughs> well, <clears throat> I got very ahead of myself when I originally announced it. Uh, it, it, this was before I really started working on, on, on the issues. And I realized that it's a very timely process. Like if I want it to look really good, I have to nurture it and, um, uh, take my time with it. So, uh, you know, I'm actually thinking more along the lines of, um, a bi-monthly release. Mm -hmm. and uh, go from there. Uh, was there a lot of um, preparation before you even started with uh, like doing the first issue? Because I, I know you like were releasing <coughs> artworks leading up to the release of Elethro, so you've, we've mm. seen like more of David's labs creations and stuff like that, uh, and, and your iterations of them as well. It, was that all part of your research even before you committed to making the comic or that that's something that just happened and it was something that came along in the process? Uh, real quick, I just got to <laughs> grab a charger for my computer. Otherwise it's going to die. Oh, okay. Uh, sure. let, me, let me grab it super quick and then I'll answer your question. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let Devin go grab his charger. I've um I've just uploaded the Alien Day podcast for Studio Yutani, and that is an exclusive interview with J W Rinsler. So if you'd like to head over to the blog, um, and have that ready to play right after um this live stream interview with uh, Devin, uh, it'd be really good for you to have a listen and um also. You know, just uh, be. I I think the U.S. is nearly finished with Alien Day, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's about ten o two, so there's a couple more hours, and then yeah. it's, it's over. <laughs> it's it's a good way to cap off Alien Day. So I I waited till everyone released yeah. their uh, Alien Day podcasts, and I re released my last. So hopefully. Hopefully it works because <laughs> I just mixed oh, it yeah. down and uploaded it. <laughs> so, um, so please let me know if I effed up. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 you're fine. You're fine. Yeah, uh, it, yeah it answered your question, though, about the amount of research. Uh, you know, during that time when I was releasing all the different artworks, that was, it was a discovery process. It was also me sussing out a lot of ideas and concepts that, you know, they, some of them ultimately didn't make it in uh, to the finished product, but they were, they were necessary for me to uh, kind of feel my way around the material, find out exactly, you know, what kind of things I wanted to present. And of course, that's just something that it happens along the way. Uh, you know, it's, it's amazing the, the, plethora of um, uh, inspirational images that you can find, not just alien-wise, but, you know, going back to some of the things that inspired uh, the people behind the prequel films and the original films, they always looked to uh, a lot of things in the real world. And so that's what I started doing, you know, like how the Neomorph uh, has aspects of a, of a, you know, it's like a mix between a, a beluga whale and a goblin shark. Uh, so in that regard, I, I was just looking at all sorts of weird creatures that exist in this world. And I'm like, okay, how can I, um, 
how can I appropriate that somehow and, and, and really work that into uh, this kind of story. And the, the scope of the story is going to allow for uh, a lot of uh, new creations to reveal themselves. I really want to show what happens when a, an entire planet uh, is, is given to this evolving uh, xenomorph uh, ecology. Uh, that's that's something that really hasn't been um, seen before. Uh, it's always been done on a on a sort of a smaller scale, but this one it's going to be done on a on a pretty uh, huge scale. So you're going to see uh, biodiversity like on a on a huge scale. And so my research into a lot of real creatures is is going to feed into that. So in that regard, the research has really helped shape, uh, you know, how I, how I want to present alien life and all that good stuff. That's so cool. <laughs> um, yeah. is there anything that you've learned, um, while doing this project that, that you, you didn't know before? Like, did you, do you learn any new skills or did you learn something about, uh, the production of, of Covenant or Prometheus that you, you, didn't previously know about before taking on the project? Uh, well, I mean, I mean, as far as the movies are concerned, I, I like, I just loved reading all about the production and, and uh, all of the different artistic, uh, forces that were at play, especially in Covenant, you know, with Dane Hallett. And, um, I am so sorry. Uh, Matt Hatton. The, uh, Matt Hatton. Yes. Sorry, Matt Hatton. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, as an artist, I really appreciated those aspects. And so, uh, you know, what I've learned uh, is mostly about how to, how to pace things out, especially in, in comics. You know, comics, it seems easy when you're reading them because <laughs> mm. when you read them, you go, Oh yeah, you know, there's a picture and then there's a word bubble coming out of it. And, and then it leads to another panel, but there it's, you, you have to learn to wire your brain to look at things in a certain way. And so I, I've learned a whole lot about layouts and, you know, how to, how to cut down on, on extraneous uh, visuals. Like if, you know, if it's very much like a movie, you know, Ridley Scott, you know, when he cuts his movies down, he cuts them down, not with the intention of taking out valuable story beats or anything like that. He, he wants to tell the leanest story possible. And, and it worked the best with the original alien he you know as much as i like the director's cut with the theatrical cut i mean he he nailed it he like he was able to to cut out a lot of stuff that you know during because when they when they film uh there was like a work print version of alien that float that's floating around on the internet and it shows you like everything that they filmed hmm. and it's a lot of film. So he had to go through all of that and present the best moment. And so I kept that in mind as I was doing the comic, uh, you know, for instance, like with the, the Rover scene, hmm. I could have done a scene where they're, they're walking towards the Rover. They have a scene where, you know, they're going to the, the, the hangar bay. But I was hmm. like, no, just, to the hangar bay <laughs> uh or like prometheus you know when they're in the cave and you know shaw she's like they want us to come and find them and then charlie holloway says yeah and then they're in space <laughs> like <laughs> like really, they, they cut to the chase and i think that's where movies and comics have such a close relationship because it's it's all about uh presenting the story to the audience 
in as succinct a way as possible. So, you know, I, I these are all things that I've learned, and I know that as I do subsequent issues, I'll get a lot better at it. Um, but I, I think, you know, just considering that this was a, a first issue, it, it could have been a lot worse. And I'm just so glad that it turned out the way it did. Me too. And um, it was it was strange, like at first, the first time I read through, because you had introduced all these new things that I wasn't used to yet. And I, got oh, to, yeah. I had to remember, uh, this is just like when you watch a film for the first time, you, you have to kind of have to accept all of these new ideas. And I, I don't know what, what's going to happen when or, when or if we get a sequel or, or a, a resolution for Covenant. Because I'm gonna have to throw all of the fan fictions out of the window, <laughs> and except for the film ones, well, and I don't think I can do that. <laughs> well, I mean, like, like who knows? You know, all the people that saw Alien Three, you know, those those people, they probably read the, you know, the Dark Horse comics with mm. like Hicks and you, and so when they see him die in the first like five minutes. They're like, uh, I feel like I've just lived another life, and that meant nothing. <laughs> like, you know, they, you know, it's it, it's very disorienting. But uh, yeah, my, it when we if or when we do get a third prequel, I mean, they've expressed the intention of doing more Alien, but I, I, I don't know for sure if they confirmed they will be concluding the prequel trilogy. They seem pretty vague about it. And yeah, yeah, so it's still up in the air as far as I'm concerned. I don't know if like, I don't know if Disney's going to go, well, let's, let's give, let's give the franchise a few years to cool off and then we'll start over. Kind of like with Terminator. Um, You know, they've, rebooted that thing at least a couple times but uh with alien i I just think it deserves that prequel trilogy deserves a solid conclusion and i think whatever ridley scott comes up with it'll be really good um but uh you know that uh, i i didn't really necessarily want to do something that ridley scott would have done because i i know that whatever he wants to do it'll it'll be very good uh so i just wanted to kind of create something that was uniquely mine at the same time so that when there is a third movie floating around uh i can at least say well you know i i I did a lethros and you know i grew as an artist because of it and people enjoyed it and and that's all i ever want to do is you know connect with an audience and excite them so is there any feedback that you've gotten from the community about what you've done so far? <laughs> have you have you read anything that um, has kind of pushed you to move forward with the comic? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I like pretty much all of the feedback has been positive. I was so scared when I released <laughs> the first issue because you know I didn't know how people would react. I don't know if people would. I didn't know if people would like the art style uh, or, you know, uh, I was especially worried about, you know, it's like the people that don't like Prometheus and Covenant. I just had it in my mind. Well, <laughs> they're going to hate this because it's, you know, it's more of the same. It's it's like if you don't like broccoli, you're not going to like it when someone makes a broccoli casserole. And they bring it over. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> but Surprisingly, it's just been nothing but encouraging and, and supportive and uh, just been blown away by it. Uh, I, I expected negativity, but I mean, knock on wood, I I haven't come across any yet. I may, but that's inevitable. Whenever you put yourself out there, whenever you put out a project, you know, you just kind of open yourself up to it. But, you know, it it pays off. Uh, you know, it, 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 the the benefits outweigh the the risks because of the fact that you're putting yourself out there. And you know, I've 
I, I have one bit of feedback uh, earlier today. It was it was a fan, and uh, they said, "Oh, I like what you're doing. Uh, what if you do this with your story?" And it was like this huge, like <laughs> like manifesto of you know, oh, what if they what if the engineers did this and that? I was I was like, well, <laughs> I was like, you know, I I uh, find those ideas interesting. Uh, I would, if anything, I would just encourage them to bring it to life themselves because I, I think, you know, the wonderful thing about alien fans is, you know, as much as they, they love content that is created by others, mm -hmm. they have it within themselves as well to, you know, to generate compelling content of their own. And that's why this alien day is very special because, uh, I, I I don't recall there being uh, like a huge um, uh, surge of, of uh, fan projects, uh, but this year there's a lot of like very interesting stuff coming from different people, uh, you know, Ash and uh, you know Connor's uh, novel and short stories and the all the stuff that Perfect Organism is doing, their web series. There's so many good things coming out that people are getting done by creativity and willpower alone. Um, uh, even a video game, like uh, there's that uh, Hope for the Future video game coming out. And I'm just so impressed with the work that that, uh, that person has done uh, so far. And... Uh, you know, I just think fandom is in an excellent place and I, I just, I can't be happier with, uh, all of the support that I've received from the community. Oh, that's nice, warm and fuzzy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there any, anything in, in the prequels, uh, that you'd change that, um, that you've, cause I, I know uh, you, you accept the, the concepts of the prequels, but you may not love them as much as I do. <laughs> I don't think anyone loves them as much as I do. <laughs> Is there anything that you'd want to change that um, Ridley Scott has introduced into canon? Hmm. Well, uh, see, the thing is, I don't think there's anything I would really change, but I feel like there's a lot that can be added to it. And that's part of why Alethros exists because, you know, a lot of people are, they're unhappy with the notion that David created the xenomorphs. Like, you know, the people are led to believe, yes, you know, he, xenomorphs did not exist before he started tinkering. Mm. And, you know, I, I believe there's just so much story beyond that. Beyond, uh, I mean, beyond what we think we know. Uh, so what's already there is great. I, I just think it's a matter of adding to it and fleshing it out and actually just unifying it, unifying uh, Prometheus and Covenant, because a lot of people's complaints have to do with the fact that it's almost like Covenant is trying desperately to get away from Prometheus, but is also trying to connect with it at the same time. Uh, so I, I do think there are ways where it, all of those elements can be reconciled uh, in, an, in an effective way. Mm. Uh, so I don't think there's anything I would really change. Uh, you know, even the things that people didn't like about Covenant, I wouldn't change them. Uh, you know, a lot of people's chief complaint is, uh, you know, the flute scene, but I wouldn't even change that. I wouldn't even change the flute scene because it was so, it was so important, mm -hmm. such an important scene. But people can't get past the, I'll do the fingering, you know, <laughs> that, that scene. And I'm like, I'm like, guys, guys, do you realize what's happening here? This is, this is a very important character dynamic that's happening. Mm -hmm. So, uh, <clears throat> so yeah, um, I, I just, I, I just think there's so much more to be explored. 
about um uh, obviously uh the the structure of um your your comic being very similar to um the divine comedy uh what what sort of uh parallels have you found um in uh the alien movies in general now uh with ridley scott retroactively inserting this sort of like uh very like dramatic and intense sort of narrative to the alien universe well uh you know, I, I, I see, I see uh, the Alien prequels in a very different way. I think ever since uh, Prometheus came out, there's been a lot of confusion uh, uh, due to the fact that prequels are often regarded as a very linear thing. Like Star Wars, you know, it's meant to be sequential. You know, episode one, two, three, four, five, six. And... So things that happen in the prequels, they are immediately of consequence to uh, the movies that they're preceding. But with the with the alien movies and the prequels, uh, it's kind of like oil and water in a glass. They occupy the same space, but they are so separate. They are completely separated, but they are in harmony with each other because the water or the oil is sitting directly on top of the other two completely uh, different substances, but they can coexist. That's just the way I see the prequels is they take place before the first movie, but it's about something else completely. And I want to bring that back uh, with Alethros. I feel like, you know, with Covenant, people were under the impression that you know, they were aggressively steering it back into Alien. And uh, I, I just feel like those two storylines, they're distinctly separate. Uh, the original trilogy was more about one woman, uh, you know, Ripley, standing against forces a lot bigger than herself. And... Uh, you know, just kind of, she represents, and she represents justice in a universe that is that isn't very fair at all, and she's just trying to push through that push against the company, push against these aliens, and the prequels are about something else completely. It's about the hubris of creation. Uh, it, it's it's about all of these these huge things. And I just see the, the, the space jockey and the derelict and alien. That's merely a nexus point. That's, you know, when you see Dallas Kane and Lambert in the ship, they're basically walking through a relic from the prequel films. And Alethros will address that in, in a, in, in some form of fashion uh, later on in the series. Uh, how, how, how would you go about, um, uh, adding to the other end of the timeline? Like, uh, you've, you've tackled like this prequel comic, so it's bridging into Alien. How would you, uh, like to continue Alien after Resurrection? Like, what what would be your way of doing that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, oh, uh, yeah, it's, it, it is a little bit of a spoiler, but, I mean, with the Lethros, who's to say that it ends where Alien begins? Uh, it is a very big story and I, I, I do have surprises at my sleeve. Uh, but like with a post alien three world, uh, you see resurrection is, is, is very tricky because I, I, I know a lot of people, they don't really see it as like a legitimate entry in the canon. They kind of just isolate it, uh, and I do as well. I, I, I tend to just look at it one, two, three, 
you know, Prometheus Covenant. I, I just I see those storylines as very insular, and Resurrection doesn't factor into it. But if I were to tackle things like in a post Alien Three uh, setting, I think hmm, that would be tricky because. <laughs> Because I do have some things planned. Oh. Uh, but yeah. Well, yeah. I, don't, I don't want to spoil it all, but that's interesting. <clears throat> yeah, well, you know, um, I, I have wondered myself, I'm like, okay, so what would the company do when Ripley's dead? Like, you know, uh, what would they just kind of pack everything up and go home? Or would they keep trying to get this? alien organism and uh, of course you know the amanda ripley comic they're delving into that right now like what if the company got a hold of it what would they do with the alien biology what would they what would they do with it uh so i would think i would think that would probably be a good direction to go in uh i don't know if i'd be the one to do it though because uh, my mind is so fixed on one point in time, but I, I do have a way to kind of work the future into it as well. Um, I, I'm I'm just hoping that there's there's a very talented writer artist out there who uh, wants to answer that question in his or her own way. Yeah, that would be good. I, I want to see more fan creations, and especially with the technology that we have at our fingertips these days, uh, we could yeah. turn out stuff that used to take, you know, armies of people to create. So, yeah, it's it's pretty pretty exciting times. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, uh, there's so many there's so many fan projects out there that even studios are threatened by and i mean that's that's a sign of the times that means that there are content creators out there if they have the willpower you know they're they're not held back by the same limitations that you know that other people were held back by in you know several decades ago it used to be just wishful thinking but now it's what people are doing is a testament to how far we're we are collectively um, coming as, you know, as, as a, as a, as a community and as uh, creative people in general. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what, what other fans have up their sleeve. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me on this uh, live stream. And I'm, uh, for people who don't know, we struggled to get everything to start even before the live stream began. <laughs> technology i had issues when i was streaming with dave earlier today so hopefully um the live stream giveaway will not have the same issues <laughs> all right yeah it's like okay the the next prize goes to <laughs> like dang oh. it no <laughs> that'll be bad but yeah I, yeah hopefully hopefully uh you know technology will be very forgiving uh when that time comes so <laughs> <laughs> if not i will i will just record it and then upload it to youtube i'll just have to make it oh there you go there you go <laughs> yeah back up for a backup there you go that's see thinking ahead thinking ahead yeah uh is there anything else you'd like to say to people as we wrap up american alien day <laughs> Oh, well, you know, I just, I hope everyone enjoyed their alien day. Uh, I, I, I hope that people have enjoyed all of the content that, you know, all of these fans have produced. And I, I just, I thank all of you who have uh, supported Alethros and, you know, kept me going. Uh, uh, I, I do it completely for the fans. So I just hope you uh, you know, stay tuned and, you know, just keep loving Alien and just keep supporting each other and lifting each other up. Excellent. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us on this live stream. And we'll see you again in how many hours? Uh, round about 
five or six hours. <laughs> I'm so tired. I want to go to sleep. <laughs> I hope you catch some Z's soon. You need you need the rest. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. This is Mother and Devin Gill signing off. Bye.